ReefWatch is a citizen science initiative that we organized so that we could help the public understand the difference between a healthy reef and a sick reef. What we do is we show people how to survey the coral reefs and count the fish populations on reefs. We give them a training session to teach them the different types of coral, the different types of fish. We ask people to pick a reef scattered all across the platform, far from shore and then one on the way back in, and apply a critical eye and look at the, the number of fish, look at the health of the corals, are they diseased, are they bleached, how many are there. So they're given a data slate that they have to fill out and it's got a pencil attached. For the fish surveys, they have at least half an hour. And then for the benthic surveys, normally what we use are PVC quadrats, which are plastic squares. Instead of making lots and lots of PVC quadrats, we used hula hoops from, the, from a toy store and we weighted them down. And what they did is they put that on the reef and looked at the amount of coral and the amount of algae, the amount of sand and rock in each area constrained by that hula hoop. By doing that several times across the reef in a fairly scientifically rigorous manner, we can take their information back and work out a lot of information about the health of the reef. But essentially what we're going to do is give each of the reefs that people surveyed a grade and then we can look at the letter grades of all the reefs scattered across the whole lagoon and then we can use our our knowledge of what's going on in Bermuda to try to perhaps infer why reefs in certain areas are um, not as healthy as they could be. The reef has a lot of functions, a big role that the reef has. It has been protecting the island from hurricanes for thousands of years, and the reefs have been healthy for thousands of years. Unfortunately, reefs all over the Caribbean and all over the world are suffering total system-wide collapse. Bermuda is literally one of a few islands left in the entire Caribbean that hasn't gone through total system collapse. And if it does happen here, we'll, it'll um, have severe consequences to the state of our fisheries. It'll have severe consequences to the state of our beaches. Our beaches will start just literally washing away. If the reefs aren't there to protect us from storm damage, those little category ones that nobody really worries about, the damage will be equivalent to a category four hurricane. Bermuda being a limestone island in the middle of the ocean, and we only have 20 odd square kilometers, it is vitally important to our existence to keep our reef alive. If we were a large volcanic island made out of granite, our reefs would be a pleasant thing to have around that had no real functional role in our survival, but our reef are vital to our survival as a country. So the reason why this was a fundraiser as well as a citizen science initiative is to produce funds that my team can use to cover the costs of going out and supplementing this citizen science effort with a bit more rigorous, intensive, scuba diving based reef surveys. Whereas we had the citizens snorkeling, so we kept them in the lagoon, which is within the protective barrier of that outer shallow reef. My team's gonna go on scuba and survey reefs down to 60 feet on the outer reef as well. Our long-term goal is to have those who can afford it, fund it, and um, those who can't afford it still be able to go. So we want anybody in Bermuda who has an interest and um, wants to get out there, we want to empower everyone to be able to get out there who wants to go out there. Whether it's um, sharing boats or getting on boats that other people have provided the funding, you know, the fuel and all that kind of stuff for, whichever way possible. And we want to open it up to the island to, if, if you want to join and get out there, um, we want to make it so that you can.